guys and welcome to this week's tutorial on ProRPA.com. Um, about two weeks back we talked about input parameters and uh, apologies that I wasn't able to put up the content for last week. Um, I was at a training, uh, uh, RPA training. I was the only, the sole trainer or let's say the facilitator for that training and uh, it was uh, for a major company, major telecom company. So, I mean, um, I was out of uh, town and uh, things were a little hectic. So, I want to apologize that, you know, I wasn't able to put the content. Okay. So, um, similar to, uh, like, in, in continuation with the, with the last blog article, today we'll be talking about output parameters. So, like, input parameters, uh, as we said, is used to input or uh, enter or provide some data to a sub workflow right from the main process to the sub process and uh, that value will be used for some uh, further computations at the sub workflow side now output parameters is simply the reverse of it what happens is many a times we work at the sub workflow level and um, do some computations and let's say the final output or the result of that of that computation needs to be sent back or sent up the hierarchy right it is uh, sent to the main process where either it is simply displayed or continued down for any further processing right there could be a possibility that output of one process can be an input to another process and vice versa right so um, those are the things that we uh, you know uh, like those are the possible use cases of input and output parameters they are pretty much the same for other programming languages too we have the ways to pass on data from one place to another in uh, whether it's Java, .NET or in other RPA applications like UiPath, Automation, anywhere as well. Right? Okay, so let's take a quick example and I'm going to open the same process that I've been working on for a while. And uh, in here, mm, let's take this whole thing out. Okay? And... Uh, I want this. So let's say I have um, two variables of numeric type. Uh, let me create another one. Right. I'm not voicing it over because uh, a few things are pretty self explanatory, right? This is of uh, let's say nine, right? And uh, what this does is, um, uh, let me also get a, sub means uh, in here, it's like the sub process, right? So main page and the sub page. So this is a some and I'm going to explain the process what exactly is being done. But currently I'm just creating a few data items. Uh, give me a minute. All right, so what I have done for now is that um, I have two variables in my main process called variable one and variable two, and I have assigned a default value. They are of numeric type, and I have assigned a default value of eight and nine to them respectively. And these values will be transferred to the page one. We have discussed that, that last time, so nothing much to ponder upon. I go to the start and... Uh, Let's say, um, first operand is the so what I'm currently doing is, um, at the sub because, um, if you remember when we we're talking about the input parameters, we majorly focus on the sub-process level and we go to its start stage and we make the 
or we create the input parameters so that they'll be automatically created in the page reference stage of the main process. I hope that makes sense, right? So right now at the sub process level, which is the page one level, I'm in the start properties. I'm just continuing with the same. We have already discussed this. This is the same input parameters, uh, pretty much the same example that we have taken last time, right? And uh, another one is, let's say I'm adding a second operand and uh, this is going to be value of second variable, right? It is going to be of numeric type, or if you don't want, you don't have to select the number or anything. If you remember um, any parameter that any input parameter, uh, we provide like where we want to store its value locally. So this is something this the, the value of this first operand parameter is something we'll be receiving from the main page from the main process. And uh, where do we want to store it locally in our sub process, which is the page one, it's gonna be sub data one. And automatically the data type will be changed for this one. I'm going to choose sub data two. automatically it got changed to number, right? This is going to be second operand. Just hit okay. And we haven't done anything yet. I go back to the main page and if I open the page one, I see first operand and second operand already. What is the first operands value that you want to pass on to the sub process level? Well, that's going to be variable one, right? And similarly for the second operand, it's variable two. Right? Makes sense. Fairly simple. This is what we have already discussed. Now, what I'm doing is I want to perform a calculation, right? Some or addition, let's probably make it a little more comprehensible. And uh, the sub data one is being added to sub data two, and the value is being stored in sub sum. So, what currently just happened is that. Um, I am performing an a sum, an arithmetic addition operation on these two variables, the values for which have been received from the main page, same as the input parameters methodology, and uh, the sum of this operation, which is the first and the second data values, is being stored in a local variable called sub sum. This is at the sub process level, the sum data item, right? And I want to end this process. Now, currently, if you'll see the value is being stored in the it is being stored locally, right? But I want to pass this on value to the main page, the main process, which is what we just discussed or what we just said is the concept for output parameters, which means now the data item would serve as an output to another process. So in this case, what we'll do is we'll still be at the sub page level, the sub process level, and we open its end stage. Right? Simple. And uh, because it's an output, so I'm going to add an output variable. It only has the output tab. So we're all good. And um, what is the output parameter? Um, let's say it's called calculated sum. Right? Uh, sum of two variables. That's a description. And uh, where do we want to get this value from? Sub sum. So this sub sum, which was the local sum value, which was computed just a few minutes back was, is being sent over from this stage back to the page reference, right? Once you did this, you go back to the main page, open the page reference stage. And in here you have input output and uh, conditions, which conditions we're not going to talk about, but for input, we have the input parameters. If you go to the output, we automatically get the output, um, you know, the parameter that we set up at the sub process level, right? It is going to be a number type because that's what was sent over. It's already has the data type. And uh, where do we want to store this value? Well, I want to store it in my main sum, which is a variable locally storing, um, which is going to locally store the value of this calculated sum uh, parameter into our main process. Okay, that's it. That's it. So just to reiterate in our input parameters we focus on the start stage of the sub process and that's where we create the parameters and automatically the page reference stage is going to have the same name and the same data type and all the same stuff of the input parameters for output parameters we focus on the end stage of the sub process we create the parameter and automatically back at the main process page 
the output parameter is going to have the same value, the same data type, and the placeholder for us to store the, uh, the value of that parameter locally. Right? And the value, the sum has been computed. All you got to do now is run the program and see how it works. So we go back to the page one, we start, we perform the addition, and the sub sum is 17, and now the main sum is also 17. Right? So the value has been computed and sent over to up the hierarchy, like uh, to the main process successfully. So that's a fairly simple concept, but it's going to come really, really handy when we'll be talking about, I mean, you'll see uh, when we'll be dealing with more complex scenarios and we'll be, you know, uh, doing some, I don't know, the SAP automation or any tool automation, any enterprise application level automation, then we'll need to pass on some parameters and understand how the concept works. And this makes our data more secure because now only those processes or sub processes which need access to the data will actually get the data and uh, rather than like you know like making them globally available to every every possible process right right my login credentials are not needed for um for i don't know for um uh, i mean for uh, let's say just uh, for just checking whether a process works correctly or not for just some verification purposes. I have, let's say, uh, different authorities in my login credentials, right? So, I mean, the use cases are limitless in this case, but um, the input and output parameters play a huge role when we'll be transferring data from one process to another, right? Okay, um, this is it for this week, guys. Um, let me know your thoughts by sharing comments, likes, subscriptions, on YouTube, on the blog as well. And uh, for a thorough learning, you can always check out the CRISPR learning book and video series available on Amazon and Udemy. And also, uh, we have the tutorials on Skillshare. So um, you can sign up using the referral link in the description below. And um, please do provide your comments on the blog post and uh, on the YouTube channel. All right? Thank you very much and happy automating. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.